Welcome, and welcome back, everybody, to the OK Grognard Show. Today is Monday, March 13th, 2023, 10 a.m. Is it 10 a.m. Central? It's a little after, in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. So we're going to look at some, uh, a few different miniatures-related things today. There's a big sale at Dragonlock. Their Lost Dungeons Master Set is on sale. And uh, I picked up a couple of the 3-inch vinyl figures. The D&D 3-inch vinyl figures Monster Miniatures series. I uh, already have that uh, one box set with the Beholder and Carrying Crawler and that sort of thing in it. And uh, this is a different thing. But first, let's look at the Dragonlock Lost Dungeon series. I'll have a link in the show notes for later. But the, uh, yeah, this is from uh, Fat Dragon Games, which do phenomenal, phenomenal terrain. And... uh, I just wanted to highlight this particular sale. Uh, they had said it was going to be a secret. And they were holding off on on showing it off for a little while. But I mean, just look at what you... That's just a part of it. Let me hop on over to Drive Through RPG where it is being... Uh, Featured is on sale. Dragon Lost Lost Dungeons Masters set. They have it here at nine ninety nine. It's uh, saving eighty percent because it's normally fifty dollars. Over two hundred models, and this is all of the high wall version models. I know they're starting to make some low wall versions. Which, you know, you can hold out and get some of that too. But, uh, boy, at this price, picking this up if you like to do any 3D printing. This is the, uh, as complete a collection as you could ever want. If you're building dungeons, it's got stairs, it's got pillars, it's got round sections it's got sconce sections i downloaded it today myself and you've got a lot of interesting little things in there the dungeon toilet which you need to have right these round rooms can get in particularly intriguing the floor rooms and i love the way they have these set up now The way they have it so that you can just take a uh, an LED bulb and slip a battery right into one of their printed pieces so that it works with no fuss. You don't have to do any soldering or gluing or any of the rest of that. And that's a that is definitely a wonder. But I mean, look at the detail in this uh, floor piece that opens up and lights up too, right? Kind of a sacrificial pit. I love that back wall piece. And if you look around at some of the other pieces, you can see it's uh, very diverse. The number of doorways and portcullis are all there the trap doors and other pieces like that are there you could basically build just about any standard dungeon out of this caverns is a separate thing so but you get some platform pieces dais pieces i love the sconces as i mentioned before Curved hallways, straight hallways, just about anything you can imagine. And of course, with these flat pieces in the middle, there's no stopping you from building very expansive rooms. 
pretty neat. Uh, the other thing that I also wanted to discuss was the uh, 3D Vinyl Minis, and I'll take a look at those, too, while we're at it. Hey, George. Hey, Sarah. Welcome to the chat. Thanks for dropping in. Looking at these 3D Vinyl Monster Mini Series, I picked up a couple. I didn't want to just blind box it because I'm not interested in all of the various... There's uh, 13 different ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Looks like 13. And uh, of the ones on here, Beholder, I've already got a good Beholder. Mimics, uh, a lot of these are obviously kind of cartoonish. And let's face it, they're three inches tall. So they're not really to scale unless you wanted to call them an oversized figure and like i say a little little quirky a little cartoonish but i don't really have a rust monster and this roper ropers can be any size and ropers are never going to look quote unquote realistic but some of the rest of these are just kind of silly i'm not a big fan of the dragons that are like that and it, it looks a little cutesy on the fire elemental, the salamander. <laughs> so there's a lot of interesting different figures here, right? But uh, I'll get to that in just a second. I did want to pick up just a couple of them. And let me see if I can find my, my pictures of what's going on here. Oh, yeah, here we go. We'll pop back over here. We had that opening picture there. The boxes. Collect them all. 13 mini monsters. They're based off first edition monster mini series, but they're three inch vinyl. So here they are next to a Bretonian archer. These are the two I picked up. And uh, I just picked them up on eBay. They were about the same price as if you pick them up randomly i think the boxes cost 15 bucks and i've got them for right under that price plus tax and i think shipping was free for this particular one you can look around though you can find them any number of places and they're definitely in some stores which is good um what else did i want to mention so, this is generally a miniature show. I've been talking to my buddy Dave O'Brien of Four Quacks Games. He's been working on printing me up this lizard creature here. It's a large lizard, obviously, if you want to count it in 28. Yeah, the rust, yes, George. The, the rust monster is definitely too big. A roper could work. I mean, you know, you could have a colossal rust monster. Talk about talk about digging its way through a pile of metal. This uh, this lizard creature that he's been 3D printing for me comes with a uh, a hoda, a platform for its back. There's a miniature for scale, but you could see by his hand what you're talking about here. And the idea is these go on the sides, right? The small piece that's on the uh, mat. There's one on each side. So you can actually fit, I guess, four or five miniatures into this thing once it's built. It's still curing, so it's still got some, uh, some time it needs to spend. There's a good side view of it right there. And... I think this was intended to be much, much larger, and he has scaled it down as I asked him to because I, I wanted something that could just carry three to five miniatures, not the uh, entire 20, 20 miniature army unit 
that it was originally intended for. So he made some adjustments to it for me. And even now, it's still nose to tail, 15, 16 inches. So at its full printed size, this thing is meant to be twice, three times this big. It's huge. And I was looking for something a little, a little less large. Having something like this in a um, tabletop game uh, still counts as one, says George. So true. So true. Still counts as one. But uh, I thought this would make for an interesting addition to a, a lizard man encounter. And can be used in a skirmish game. But uh, the larger version of this would only be able to be used in uh, much more expansive uh, mass combat game. And that doesn't suit my purposes. So I asked him to scale it down for me. And uh, he has done so. And it's already looking great. Hopefully I'll be seeing this in the next couple of days if it's all finished up and whatnot. Um, I do appreciate it, by the way. Cord, Sarah says Cord, her character in the first edition campaign, wants a lizard mount now. Thanks a lot. These probably aren't even on her continent. Well, a large battle encounter, says George. Yeah, Sarah, you know, if, uh, if you wanted to go look for something like this, you would think it would exist somewhere so it's just a matter of uh doing a little research and searching i suppose i'm not sure i'm not sure all of the hoops you'll have to jump through to get something like this but let's never say never because uh we love a good game of D D, and uh we want to say yes as much as possible, even if that means you can find one and it will just eat you. It is possible that it might not end well. In any event, <laughs> that's about it for today's show. I just wanted to uh, draw people's attention to the Dragonlock Lost Dungeons dealio and uh, talk about the George, yes, if I'm all set for GaryCon. I've still got some some prep to do, but I'm probably 90% there. We're just a little over one week, indeed. I like to be ready at least a couple days in advance, so I'm not rushing. And it uh, feels pretty good. I hope you're ready, George. And uh, Sarah. Sarah laughs and says, lizard mounts where dreams go to be digested. <laughs> Absolutely. Fantastic. That's the kind of, uh, that's the kind of joke that will get you extra XP at my table. So, you keep that up. <laughs> and thank you both for being here today. It's much appreciated. I also want to say thanks to everybody who's checking out the show. Now we should, uh probably go into the uh, closing credits here and we'll just say yeah it's been a story about the show about the dragon lock lost dungeons master set and the vinyl figures and uh that nifty uh thing that dave o'brien's been printing up for me it's much appreciated the show streams live on twitch each monday at 10 a.m central is then archived on youtube please by all means follow the channel on twitch Chime in in the chat, and of course, if you're catching up with it on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, click the little bell so you get updates when new videos are uploaded, and by all means, please give us a thumbs up and comment on videos as you get the chance. Thanks to our Patreon supporters, Tom Tullis of Fat Dragon Games, Carlos Lysing of Castle Entertainment, 
Keith Farndon of the NAPD and D20, Dave O'Brien of Four Quacks Games, and of course, Shane Bradley, DM Extraordinaire. This has been the OK Grognard Show from beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Bye-bye. Uh,